So dreamers, one of the topics that has been recurrent in the last months in conversations across cultures and geographic locations around the planet is the unknown world of viruses and especially COVID. For the layperson, understanding the concepts and ideas behind the science can be complex. Depending on our backgrounds and exposure to information, we as humans can conclude and form ideas. That's why, as a curious mind, I reach out to Akiko Iwasaki, principal investigator at the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. If I were you, I would watch this video until the end. You never know how knowledge can change your life. Hello dreamers, my name is Kike Calvo, photographer and entrepreneur. Welcome to Reflections with an Accent. Today I have the pleasure to have with us Akiko Iwasaki, professor in the Department of Immu Immunobiology at Yale University. I should also add that besides being a professor in the Department of Molecular, Cellular and Developmental Biology at Yale, She's a kind and polite human that was born in Japan, who I happened to photograph on assignment years ago. I remember vividly when you came to Yale to take my photographs. They were by far the best photographs of my life. I still use it for everything from my Twitter account, Instagram, and seminar posters. You really captured who I am and my joy as a scientist in your photographs. Akiko was named on the 50 experts to trust in a pandemic list. Iwasaki rapidly received her lab at Yale University to tackle COVID-19. Akiko, it is a great pleasure to have you in my channel. I truly appreciate you taking the time to chat with me and especially sharing your expertise with my audience. Hello, Kike. It is my great pleasure to be with you on this YouTube channel. So let's get started, Akiko. And please remember that my audience lives around the world and comes from multiple backgrounds. If you could use a language to address all the questions ahead in a simple manner, I would really appreciate. I would like to start with Immunology 101. What is a vaccine? How does it work? what are antibodies, what is immunity, and finally, what is a virus? So viruses are tiny invaders that enter our cells, multiply, and invade more cells. This process is called replication. Viruses need at least two things. The genome, which is really the genetic blueprint that makes up the virus, and the genome consists of either DNA or RNA. And the coat, which covers these genomes, so it protects the genome from being deg uh, degraded and allows it for cell entry. Vaccines are what gives the instructions to our cells to make the immune responses against the virus. So for COVID-19, we need the immune response to target the spike protein, which is the protein that's used by the virus to attach to our cells and enter and infect. So the vaccines are made up of the spike protein. Our immune system recognizes the spike protein as being foreign and starts to build antibodies and T cell responses against the spike protein. So antibodies are molecules that are secreted by immune cells that attaches on the surface of the virus and stops its, um, it from entering the host cells. And antibodies bind those spike proteins and make them unable to enter the cells. Immunity is also created by T cells, which are again specific for viruses particularly the T cells are able to detect infected cells and kill them so that the viral factories are destroyed. 
So immunity is a protection against these viruses and bacteria that prevents the infection and disease from happening. Vaccines provide the instruction for the immune system to generate these antibodies and T cells. At the end of this process, our body mounts uh, protective immunity against future infections. And uh, this immunity can usually last for years. And so once you're vaccinated, you're protected from viruses or bacteria for many years to come. Thank you for making it so simple for us. How would you explain variants and reinfections? So viruses make mistakes during replication. These are called mutations. When the virus copies its genome inside the cell, they introduce small number of wrong nucleic acid code into the genome. And these are mostly useless or, you know, harmful to the virus um, and are eliminated. However, some mutations give rise to better replication and spread. Those mutations become dominant and become these variants that take over certain parts of the population. And so because they're more capable of transmission and infection, uh, they kind of outcompete the existing uh, type of viruses that are in the population and they become dominant variant. And these variants can also cause reinfections uh, in some cases because people who have recovered from the original virus, uh, their immune response is, are no longer able to contain these variants if the variants are significantly different from the original virus. Um, reinfection can also happen with non-variant viruses if the immune responses of the person uh, weakens over time. So there are two types of reinfections that are happening. One's from um, the variants and the other from the existing virus as a result of people's immunity uh, waning over time. What was your research before COVID and how do you get into COVID research? My lab used to work on many different types of viruses before the COVID. Uh, for instance, we were studying uh, herpes simplex viruses that cause genital herpes. Uh, we were also studying respiratory viral infections like influenza, the flu, the rhinovirus, um, and mosquito-borne viruses like Zika virus. We were also studying things called uh, endogenous retroviruses, which are um, encoded within our own DNA, and they are um, kind of remnants of previous viruses that have entered our genome. Um, we don't have any infectious endogenous retroviruses. However, they do occupy a large fraction of our genome and therefore are important uh, in the host physiology. Um, we were studying these viruses in order to understand how immune response recognize these viruses and how we mount a, this long lasting memory response uh, in the hope of creating better vaccines. So we were trying to develop better vaccines against all these types of viruses. And we still do this type of research in addition to um, COVID research. However, since March of 2020, a lot of people um, shifted to doing COVID research because of its urgency and importance. What do you find so far in your COVID research? So over the past um, 12 months or so, we've been finding a lot of interesting uh, facts about the virus and the host immune response. For example, we found that uh, severe COVID patients have this immune misfiring in that their immune system is reacting with all kinds of immune responses that are usually reserved for uh, parasites or bacteria or fungi. But all of these if functions are engaged in the severe COVID patients. 
um, indicating that uh, something is really unbalanced about the immune response to this virus. We also found that uh, com by comparing male and female immune responses, that men, especially older men, have a difficult time mounting good T cell immune response. And that results in them getting worse disease, uh, whereas women have the capacity to trigger good T cell activation, even uh, in older age. So that's another thing we found about um, immunity to this virus. We also found that timing of antibody responses that a person um, generates during an infection is very important. So for people who died of COVID infection, we found that their antibodies were very delayed, um, usually happening after two weeks of symptom onset. And whereas those people who developed antibody early in the infection uh, had a, a better outcome uh, from this infection. So this means that the timing of antibody response is also important. We also found that saliva is a better predictor of COVID disease than the nasopharyngeal swabs, uh, indicating that there is something about the saliva that allows us to monitor uh, the disease causing viral replication events in the, in the person. And uh, that may be because the saliva reflects the replicating virus within the lower respiratory tract because it can monitor the um, virus replicating in the lung through uh, mucociliary escalator, which are these sort of carpet-like um, movement that's found in the airway cells that propels the virus upwards into the uh, throat and into the oral cavity. Whereas the nasopharyngeal swabs are measuring the upper respiratory tract infections. Another thing we found was uh, evidence of um, COVID virus infection in the brain and in the placenta um, in uh, severe cases of COVID. So this indicated to us that not only does this virus infect and replicate in the respiratory tract, but it could also uh, enter tissues such as the brain or the placenta to uh, have an impact in distal organs. And finally, uh, we also found that there are what's called autoantibodies that are generated in uh, severe COVID patients. So antibodies, as I mentioned, are these molecules secreted by the immune cells that latches onto the surface of the virus and blocks the virus from entering the host cell. So they are really important immune mechanism of control of virus. However, in some patients, we're also seeing antibodies that are targeting our own cells and own factors, even um, these factors that are usually used by our immune system to control the virus replication itself. So these autoantibodies um, may be uh, uh, a problematic in, in people because they, they might interfere with the actual antiviral defense mechanisms and also they might target different organs uh, such as the brain or the heart or the blood vessels. So these autoantibodies can also be long lasting and could result in long-term symptoms. As I keep my eyes and my ears open for what people are talking around the world, many times at street level, I have found a strong dichotomy between those who cannot wait to access the vaccine and those who have stress, they will not get vaccinated. What would be your message to those who are against a vaccine? Well, I've been studying immune responses for decades and I know that the vaccines are a very safe and effective in preventing uh, disease and transmission of variety of pathogens that used to kill human beings um, in the past 100 years or so. The vaccines have been developed to stop uh, things like smallpox or um, you know, variety of other pathogens, uh, including 
measles and mumps and rubella and influenza, uh, which uh, are, are uh, pathogens that really uh, used to affect people and um, kill people. And now the vaccines um, against the coronavirus that causes the COVID-19 has been have been tested and they are um, all safe and effective uh, against the um, infection from this virus. And so all approved vaccines are safe and effective. Um, and we should get the vaccine not only to protect our own selves, but also to protect others around us. Not everyone has an intact immune system and are capable of mounting their own immune response. So if the, the vast majority of us who are immunocompetent can get the vaccine, we can also provide protection uh, for those who cannot mount such responses. So it's our social responsibility to get the vaccine to protect the population um, against the COVID-19. I have heard arguments uh, from people saying that vaccines are an attempt uh, from governments trying to kill people, uh, to insert in them with a combination of DNA that could affect their future health or even kill them. As a true expert in the field, what would you say to them? Well, um, this sounds scary and it's an absolute nonsense. Vaccines cannot become integrated into our DNA. Uh, it will only provide beneficial immunity against COVID it will not affect your future health or kill you. Um, these vaccines have been tested rigorously for safety. And um, obviously if it was, um, if there was any danger associated with these vaccines, they would not have been approved. The governments are not trying to um, kill people, but instead they're trying to protect their citizens against this terrible disease. So as an expert immunologist, I must speak up against this type of misinformation. Um, we need to get vaccinated in order to help the world heal and recover from this, this terrible virus. So in very rare cases, um, like 11 people in a million, um, people have developed allergic reactions to the vaccines. Uh, we do not know exactly what they are reacting to, uh, but if you have tendency for severe allergic reaction called anaphylaxis, uh, you should consult your doctor before taking the vaccine. And you need to be monitored after the vaccination to make sure that you're okay. Um, as mutations seem to be happening already, uh, could it happen that the current vaccines will not be useful anymore? Um, the mutations are happening already. However, most of those mutations are still covered by the current vaccines and the variants that are emerging in different parts of the world should be covered by the current vaccine. Um, and so the more rapidly we can have everyone vaccinated, uh, the more we can control the spread of these variants um, and that should be really our goal is to, um, you know, distribute and vaccinate as many people as possible as early as possible. Yes, the governments have signed scientific advisors who are making evidence-based recommendations for vaccines, uh, both with respect to their authorization and implementation and rollout. So I'm confident that the scientists who are working with the government are making the best scientific recommendation um, that's possible right now. There are a few things we can do to maintain a good immune response. Um, for example, uh, healthy eating, um, sleeping well, getting enough exercise, humidifying your homes, um, and ventilating uh, to make sure that you have um, fresh air uh, coming in. These are all important measures that we can all do uh, in addition to, of course, mask wearing and physical distancing uh, as part of the fight against COVID. 
Um, and in parts of the world where there is limited sunlight and uh, low vitamin D, uh, we could also take vitamin D supplements to make sure that our immune response works optimally against um, any infection, including COVID. I am learning so much from your expertise, Akiko. But as you probably know, the YouTube format requires us to be concise. I wish I could extend this interview to keep on picking your mind. Uh, but I would like to, to wrap up today's conversation, but not before asking you about your future plans and goals. So a majority of people uh, develop antibodies to the coronavirus um, that uh, after recovery from infection. It takes about uh, two weeks or so after infection to generate antibody responses. And these antibody responses can be measured by serological assays uh, that test for the presence of antibody in your blood. Uh, and these antibody tests are available in many parts of the world, but not everywhere. Uh, vaccines also will ensure high levels of antibodies to develop, uh, especially after getting the second shot. So people who have the intact immune system will generate a large amount of these antibodies and are protected from infection. If you are immunocompromised, uh, you may need the help of um, other uh, measures like monoclonal antibody cocktails, uh, which are pre-made antibodies that can be given to people who are unable to mount um, antibody responses uh, if they're uh, infected with coronavirus. And as we come to an end, Akiko, we have a tradition in this channel. I am well aware of your tradition, Kike. I always follow you on YouTube. I thank you for the opportunity to share science with your audience today. I am so happy now that we have highly effective and safe vaccines that can help us get back to our normal lives. I am astonished by the accomplishment of science over the last 12 months, uh, rapid vaccine development and learning so much about the virus and the immune response to the virus. I'm very hopeful that together we can beat the virus with the vaccines. Finally, as a woman in science, I want to tell all the girls in the world to dream big. You have so much potential to make a difference in this world. Pursue your dreams because the world depends on you. So that's all, dreamers. Remember to never stop dreaming and please be safe be smart, be kind.